We've had AI text-to-image generation for quite some time now through notable diffusion models such as Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, and OpenAI's DALI. And while Midjourney might arguably be the most capable or at least popular of the three, it's still Discord-based and doesn't provide an outright API. Stable Diffusion and DALI do, but there's also a new entrant into the field. Google, through their Vertex Cloud Platform, just recently made their Imagine text-to-image API publicly available. And while it's a bit late to the party, it looks to be a formidable contender. The problem is, if you want to use it in your own applications, the process is a bit murky. I'll be doing a deep dive comparison on these image generation APIs in another video, but in this one, I'll be showing you how to use the Imagine API. For that, I'll be showing you how to set up a Google Cloud account and enable the Vertex API for your own use, and walking you through some Python code that implements the API to generate images. We'll also incorporate a simple user interface using Hugging Face and Gradio, which we can easily host online. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's go through the Google Cloud setup. I've already got a Google Cloud account, and this is a project that already has access to the Vertex API, but let's see if we can create a new project. We'll just call it Imagine Tutorial, Imagine, sorry, no organization, create. Now we'll go to APIs and Services, search for Imagine, we'll enable that API. Let's look at Billing. You will need to enable Billing. I've already got it set up. And now we'll need a service account, so I'll search for that, create that service account, call it Imagine Tutorial. We'll grant access to the project via owner. Now under these three dots, we'll say Manage Keys. We're gonna add a key and create a new one. It'll be JSON. And it saves it to our computer and we will never see this again, so hang on to it. And here it is in my downloads file. Okay, now this next step is optional, but highly recommended. You'll want to encode your service account key so that you can use it in something like Hugging Face Space or an environment variable and not have to worry that someone's going to see the actual key. They will see an encrypted version of the key. I'm going to change to my downloads folder. And that's where that key is. Imagine hyphen tutorial dash whatever encrypted key. So I'm going to say open SSL base64 encoding. Our input file is going to be whatever the JSON file is that we downloaded. And our output file is just whatever file name you want to give it. We'll hit that. And now we see imagine encoded.json. And if I open it up in a code editor, a text editor, whatever, you can see it's just this big long string of numbers and letters. So I'm going to copy this and then I've got this project set up here, which is part of my Hugging Face Space, and you can copy it, as I mentioned, but you're just going to essentially paste that into this env sample file, which you'll save as .env. And now if we load that env variable into our project, we can connect to Google Cloud and the Vertex API. To test locally, we're going to do a few things that don't actually require this service account variable. It's just gcloud in it, and it's going to give us some options here. I've already configured this, so I'm not going to do it, but you could just click create a new configuration. And the next command you'll run after that's set up is auth application default login. It'll take you to a place where you can log in with your Google account. And once you've done that, you're good to go. But now if I were to test my app, which is completed, yours won't be. I've got a server running and I've got access to the Imagine API. So if I want to create a happy cloud, get real Bob Ross here. We got a picture of a happy cloud. At least I think it's happy. Okay, so how did I build this? That's what we're going to get into next. I'll show you how to use the Python SDK for Imagine and Gradio to create this interface, and I will show you how to host it on Hugging Face Spaces. So at the risk of describing something you already well know, in Python, there is a concept of this requirements.txt file, which specifies all the libraries that you're going to use in your project and their versions. I've got one here, and if I want to install them, I would just type pip3 install requirements.txt, Dash R is recursive, and these are the requirements. 
Gradio is the thing that's going to be handling that user interface that we just saw, where you can type a thing into a text field, click a button, and display an output image. This python.env is a thing that allows us to access our secrets file, the .env file. PyMongo we don't need. That's a database thing that I was using in another version of this project. Google Cloud AI platform is the platform that allows us to get access to Imagine. Pillow is an image library that allows us to display the image. I'm not sure that we actually need it in this code sample. And then there's just the basic Google Python package, which allows us to do things like log in and perform basic functions. And then there's this Pi Base64. And what that allows us to do is take the image that we're going to get back from the Imagine API, code it as a Base64 image, and display it in the browser. So now let's look at our app.py file. This is the thing that actually runs the code that uses the API to display stuff on screen for the user. And there's a whole bunch of stuff we need to import. You'll recognize some of this from the requirements.txt file. Some of the rest of it is built into Python, so we didn't need to install it specially. Gradio, we've got our .env, we've got the AI platform from Google, and then that vertex AI is a subset of that library. And specifically from the vision models, we want the image generation model. We also want to be able to preview things. So we've got that preview. Last thing we need to do is just authenticate with our Google Cloud account via that JSON secrets file. So that's why we need JSON here. Because it was encrypted, we're pulling in this PyBase64, which is Base64 encoding. Here's our service account and our auth. So we load our secrets file. We get the stuff that we pasted into that imagine variable. And then the project is whatever you called your project in Google Cloud. This is one I previously created called PDR Imagine, but I think the one we set up was imagine-tutorial. And then we're initializing the Google Cloud AI platform with this AI platform dot init function. We pass it our project. We pass it our credentials from our secrets file. And that should allow us to use the Imagine API. So let's look at our code. We've got this generate image function that's going to handle all the image generation. But let's first look at what our UI is like. So I mentioned we're using Gradio. Gradio just makes it really easy to create these user interfaces. And so I'm saying with Gradio blocks as demo application, let's create some markdown. You can create HTML, you can create markdown, you can just create straight up text, but we're going to use markdown here because I'm pretty familiar with it. And this is just like a heading tag. It accepts HTML within the markdown even. So I'm centering things and I'm just going to give it a title. Then I'm going to give the users some instructions, but people may know these things in terms of how to create a prompt. So I'm just saying with Gradio.accordion, that allows us to expand and collapse these instructions and tips so people can hide them and they don't distract from the rest of the interface. And you can see in this open parameter, we're just going to say false. Main purpose of this application is to take user prompts and generate images from them, obviously. So We've got another accordion here for the prompts. And inside of it, we've got a text box. What do you want to create? We ask the user, they fill something in, and we create it. The way that we create it is we specify our model. That's going to be one of a number of options here for Imagine. I think they have 002 through 005 available. So you can see our array has two options and a default value of number five. And then we're going to add another row with gr.row that has a button that allows us to submit that prompt to create an image. And then we've got another display component, which is also super easy to create, just gr.image. And then lastly, we've got a few event listeners in here. They actually duplicate each other's functionality and the main difference you might notice between these two blocks of code is that in this first one, the API name is false. In the second, the API name is filled out as generate image. Now, the really cool thing about Gradio is they just allow you to create your own API from the code you're already writing just by passing an API name. And that 
now becomes callable within a hugging face space. Another thing I love is that normally to wire a user interface element to a backend API to handle functionality, you would need to write a bunch of code. But look how easy it is to do in Gradio. You just specify the function that's going to handle the click. You specify the inputs, which are the text and the model we want to use. And then you specify the output where people are going to see the thing that you create. Gradio will even handle the conversion of formats between inputs and outputs. Pretty cool. Okay, so that's all of our interface code. And the way we would kick that off is just to say demo.launch. The share feature is set to false, but this is also really cool. If you set that to true, you get a temporary, I think 24 or 48 hour link online to a public URL. So now let's just look at that generate image function. We're passing in the prompt and the model name. This try and accept will allow us to capture any errors that occur. And within this try, we're going to specify the model, call the imagine image generation model, and wait for a response from the generate images function within the model, passing the prompt and the number of images we want to generate. So we'll just generate one for now. Our response comes back and we want to grab the image bytes. There are several things that come back that we could use if we're operating within a Google Colab notebook, you can actually just say response zero dot show. Um, and the reason that the zero is because it's the first image in the array, but we're only asking for one image. If we were asking for more, this might be a one, two, or a three, say if we were having four images. And then we're gonna create an image URL using this bytes IO Python package and passing in the bytes we got back from the Imagine API. So that just gives us a sort of base64 URL that we can use to display in the browser, in the hugging face space. Probably a number of different ways you could display this image, but this is how I'm doing it. And if there's an error, we're just gonna display that to the user. But assuming everything goes well, we just return that image URL back to Gradio. And remember, our output image is this gradio.image. So when we call that function and create the output image, it's automatically handling all of the wiring that allows it to be displayed in our interface. And that's all there is to it. So as you can see, I've got the same exact thing that I was running locally hosted on Hugging Face Space that you can interact with. But before I go into that, you're probably wondering where did all this code come from? Where's the documentation? Well. Almost all models, especially all models that end up on Hugging Face, come with a model card. In Google Cloud, that is under this model garden, and you can search for it, but this is the model card for Imagine. And it gives you kind of a rundown of all the different things it can do. Looks like it can generate images. It can actually edit images. It can do in-painting and out-painting, and it can apply different styles. I haven't seen how to do that, and I don't know that there's documentation yet on how to do that but they do kind of walk you through some code samples of how to query the API and what the responses look like. They show you the different models and their release dates. So remember we are using version five, but there's also like this version two. And you can see this GA stands for general audience. That means it's out of private beta. And then they've got some links to how to do this kind of stuff. Now I got into a real spiral of trying to figure out how to do it based on their links because they really just don't actually go and document this, especially not in the Python software development kit. So I had to go to the code itself. So if you go to GitHub, you go to Google APIs, you find the Python AI platform, you can see they've got this folder for preview. And since it was in beta, I figured that's where I should start looking. And in that preview folder, they've got this visionmodels.py file. And sure enough, they have the image generation model. Problem is there's not much in this file, so I had to keep looking for other places where the image generation model might be used. And you can see this file is importing from vertexai.vision underscore models. And so if we look at that and try to find image generation, there we go. And what's nice is even though the documentation on the website isn't great, they've 
put some inline comments with how to call this model. And this is really all that we did here is implement this for the most part. We were passing in the model, if you remember, and we were passing in the prompt from Gradio. We were specifying one image. We left the seed parameter out of there, but if you want to generate images that are based on other images you've generated, you could fill in the seed there. And then they've got two different ways that you could display this image. One is the show functionality. And I mentioned that's only available within a Google Colab notebook. They also have a save method where you can save it to your hard drive, but we wanted to show it to the user. So that's where we got into the Byte64 display of images. So if you ever get into this situation in the future where you're pretty sure code can do a thing, but there's no documentation on it, or it's an early release feature or something like that, always take a look at the code and see what you can find, because oftentimes they'll have something like this that gives you some clues on how to do a thing that's not yet in the documentation. Okay, so last, last thing, I promise. I mentioned that I'm hosting this on Hugging Face Spaces. It's free. It's easy to use. There's plenty of places you could host this code, but I'm using Hugging Face. You can see you can set up all these different spaces. So if I wanted to create a new space, I could just go to Spaces, Create New Space. I could give this a name. I can specify a license, Apache 2. It's going to be a Gradio app. We'll just use the free tier, but you can actually scale this sort of app. If you were doing a lot of compute, like uh, model training or something like that, then it might be worth it to use one of their GPUs. But for our purposes, we're actually just doing inference. I'm going to create that space. And now it's just like GitHub. If you've ever done this on GitHub, you get a URL where you can post this code. So I like to use an app called SourceTree for all my Git stuff because I can just see what's happening a little bit better. But you can see I've got this branch called Imagine Tutorial. I've got an uncommitted change. I'll commit that change, uh, remove OpenAI. Is supposed to be in there, commit that code. And now I want that to go up to Hugging Face. So I'm going to say git remote add imagine tutorial. And then I'm going to pass it that URL that we got from Hugging Face, which is right here. So we do that. Now we've got that remote. Now we're going to push to it. So this dash u specifies our upstream remote, which is called imagine dash tutorial. And then we're going to specify our local branch, which is also imagine not tutorial at the moment, but it could be anything. And then the remote branch is always going to be main. If you were to push it to imagine tutorial, it's not going to show up on Hugging Face. It's got to be main. So we do that. Oops. First time you do this, you need to force it. And now it's pushed. And now you can see this space has already kicked into gear. It is building the container because it's picked up that there are code changes. It's giving us a log of all the processes that are happening. So if anything goes wrong, we can look at it. And now over here in the container, now it'll put this thing to sleep if people aren't using it so that you don't get billed if you go to one of the non-free pricing tiers. Oh, and look, we've got an error because I forgot one thing, which is in the settings where you can configure a lot of things, again, the GPU, but also if you were storing these images, it'll provide storage for you. But we need to add our secret. So the same as we did with our .env file, we create an imagine secret and we paste in that service account that is encrypted. There you go, paste, save. Now, again, it's already picked up that there is a change in the secrets file, so it's building it again. Container starting up. And this time we can see that this thing is running. So if we want to see it, click on app, and there you go. There's our prompt. Flying monkey, why not? There you go. We can download this. It automatically gives us a download button. It gives us a share button. I don't know how to set that up, but I know the download works. There's our flying monkey. He's so cute. So there you go. Whatever you can imagine made possible by Google Vertex. So give this a shot. As I mentioned, you can see all the code here. You can actually uh, duplicate this space, and run it on your own hugging face space. You can modify the code then. Let me know what you create if you do anything cool.
if you appreciate this space, maybe, I don't know, give it a like or something. That seems to be what people do. Feel free to raise any questions in this discussion. If you have code modifications, fill out a pull request. Good luck.